Welcome to humanity. This is our one. Whatever it takes, we got to say whatever it takes. It takes is what it took. This is Brock Lesnar, and you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Yo, hi, this is Sugar Ray Leonard, and you listen to Fight Net Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to listen to Fight Net Radio. Me, Harvey Oswald, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. How am I supposed to know you? This is Frank Shamrock. We're listening to Fight Net Radio. Hi, this is Mia, the Knockout St. John. You're listening to Fight Net Radio, and there's no way I would ever touch Lee. Chuck Hi, I'm Stephen Bonner, and you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Yeah, Anderson, you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Everybody, welcome to Fight Net Radio, <laughs> where Lee's burning every <laughs> bridge there is out there. All right. Oh, hi, this is Manny Pacquiao. I'll fight anybody on FightNetRadio.com. Hey, I'm the king of the world. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. You're not that great. I'm a bad man. Hey, hey, hey. I took up the world. Hi everybody, welcome to Fight Net Radio, where this show never ends and Andrew and I are strapped to a phone, and since Andrew's not in a parking lot already shit-faced at 925, I can record on a Sunday your news of the week that you're getting today on Monday. Congratulations for you. Uh, news of the week brought to you by, I'll do this because I like him, Roy Jones Jr. Boxing. Join them on September 30th for Knockout Night at the D. Roy Jones Jr. is back. Go see a fight in the parking lot. Your host will be uh, Jim Rome doing, uh, Jim, not Jim Rome, but uh, good old JR, Jim Ross, will be doing the commentary ringside. I'll be there. Uh, in fact, they sent me a note telling me to get my shit together and get my credential in so I'm not late this time. <laughs> uh, it's a good time. The D puts on great fights. It's really close. It's intimate. It'll be on CBS Sports. And I knocked out a news story by giving them some publicity. Knockout Night at the D, sponsored by the D Hotel at the DLVEC, the Downtown Las Vegas Event Center, right behind the D. Uh, Good times. If you want to spend the night, stay at the D, the hottest place in downtown by far. Hey, Lee. Yeah. Does Tony Lopez know he has a son? No. Uh, Tony Lopez Jr. is fighting at the D that night. I know. I saw that. I have Uh, have Tony Lopez on social media. That can't be his kid because I've never heard of him. (laughs) Pretty funny. Yeah, that's going to be terrible if that's his son. I'd be like, damn, you didn't even. So here's how the for for any of you who want to go to a knockout night at the D, I figured out what their formula was at the last fight. And by the way, go meet Roy Jones. He takes selfies. He signs autographs. If he's if he shows up, he's awesome. He shows up in a pair of board shorts and just walks around. He's a blast. He's a good guy. And actually, the Las Vegas local celebrities all show up at this for whatever reason. Like, all the guys from Count's Customs were there one night. Um, You name it. Like, this is, like, the thing to go to. So, uh, Danny, the guy who owns the the D and the DLVEC, and I think he owns the Golden Gate. Uh, The guy who owns everything is there in the really loud jackets. It's a good time. Like, here's their formula. They go to the local fight clubs in and around Southern California and Arizona, right? And they find guys that are kind of up-and-comers or doing pretty well, right? And what they do is they match up basically fight clubs more or less. And if they have to, they'll import a bigger fight. This particular time, they're going to do a WBA uh, Bantamweight Championship, which isn't bad for them. But by and large, they bring in these kids from like Arizona to fight people from Blythe. So they fill up these to the arena based on... All these people are just coming into Vegas, and the energy is crazy good, crazy good for the D fight nights. So I knocked out a news story. Uh, go buy your tickets; they cost nothing. Like you can go to the fight for ten bucks, and you get a, an ungodly amount of. Fun. They start at five thirty. They don't go on TV till eight thirty. They're not done till usually ten thirty. They fought so long two weeks ago that I showed up late. Got in at 7.30. TV didn't go live till 8.30. I went into downtown and ate and gambled and showed up uh, at 9 for the, the main and the co-main. That's crazy amounts of fighting. So you get a lot of bang for your bucks. And and you can get a seat for as little as like 15 or 20 bucks. It's a blast. I cannot stress it enough. 
there's my big push for for Lisa over at uh, RJJ Boxing and for Roy himself. They've been very friendly to this show, um, so I will be very friendly back to them. So news of the week is brought to you by the D Knockout Night at the D. Go see it, and I knocked out a story. Triple G Brooks uh, Chocolito Quadris. The numbers. The tail of the tape, unified middleweight champion Gennady Golovkin, uh, fifth round stoppage of previously unbeaten Special K Brooks, was viewed by 1,436,000 viewers on HBO World Championship Boxing past Saturday night. Woo! Um, And it was the highest rated HBO broadcast telecast in many years. Um that's crazy. Live, it was 843 and 593 on uh, replay. The thrilling Gennady Golovkin uh, viewed on TV Azteca to 1.5 million in Mexico on Saturday afternoon. Woof. That's Golovkin's 23rd straight knockout and his 17th world title defense uh, at the O2 Arena. Also on Saturday, Roman Gonzalez drew t- six people at the forum. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I was exaggerating a little when I was saying the 100,000 to six. It sounded like 100,000 to six. Dude, he got 6,000 people in a 12,000. No, I a, know. That was bad. It was bad. Dude. And you got HBO saying he's the best fighter in the world. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Like, you don't publicize those numbers. Don't put out the press release. He got good views, though. 833. So Yeah, he got 833,000 uh, watching the actual telecast. Uh, HBO has lobbied to make him fight of uh, at, fighter of the year and fight of the year. Look at what he no. did in Mexico. He two point three. He came in higher than uh, triple. Oh no, absolutely, and I get that. Um, and if Canelo can figure out a way to get Gonzalez to gain twenty pounds, I'm sure he'd fight him. Gonzalez versus Cuadras should be. Rematched. How about Gonzalez versus uh, Alvarez? What do you think? <laughs> you think I, I actually to take that thought fight? about it. I was like, Elvis, who, who, who's he talking about? <laughs> what? He's only got to gain 20 pounds, bro. Yeah. <laughs> What's the big deal? Come on. Hey, actually, that's, that's Oscar. That's Oscar's stance about why he won't fight Triple G, right? Yeah, Gonzalez already came out and said he will not move up anymore, which is uh, a, which uh, is a smart move, Lee. That's a, he didn't look good in his in this. And by the way, here is why Gonzalez is not a great champion. I'll say this. He's a one belt Johnny. I'm going to say it. If you've only got one belt, it's hard for me to respect you. And I'm not saying you can't kick my ass in the alley. Oh, he totally. Yeah, I'm sure he would beat up a lot of fighters. He's not a great fight. You want to be a great fighter? Have a lot of belts. There are enough belts out there that you can get two or three or four or five. That's the way it should be. Does that make me a dick? I don't know. No. I think Ello should really look into fighting Gonzalez. That sounds like an HBO dream match. Yeah, Max Kellerman wouldn't sleep the night before. Hey, yeah, you know, probably- another dipshit thing he said is when they were talking about Saul Alvarez's uh, activity, how much he fights a year, so, uh, Max Kellerman goes, he reminds me of Jose Luis Ramirez. Jose Luis Ramirez is who you think about when you think about a Mexican who fought, who was very active in his boxing career. That's the name you think about, Max? Get the fuck out of here. I don't know what Chavez did to Max Kellerman, but uh, he clearly does not like uh, JC Superstar. I tell you that. You know who Jose Luis Ramirez is? One, most Americans know him by the guy that robbed Pernell Whitaker in the lightweight division because we know Metskins always get uh, victories against uh, uh, Olympian Americans. But yeah, he got he robbed Pernell of his victory. And then you're like the stepchild to fucking Julio Cesar Chavez your whole career. Chavez beat you. Rumor is Chavez took his wife. I mean... Like, Jose Luis Ramirez can get out of here. You know who the most active fighter is. You know who the best fighter is. And Max is just dumb, just trying to act like he knows way more than he does. Uh, Presidential candidate Bernie Sanders calls out Triple G for an October 29th (laughs) fight. Uh, WBO middleweight champion Bernie Sanders and socialist will defend his title against an opponent to be named. Uh, on the Fury Klitschko undercard. Fuck, great card. Nope. Now it's a great card. That's that's going to be must-watch TV. Two gypsies in the interviews. Mm, yep. The gypsies on gypsies <laughs> saying crazy-ass shit. Uh, Bernie Sanders will be making his first defense of his belt. He won against Andy Lee last December. 
We're looking at a couple of opponents uh, on October 29th. Said Frank Warren, uh, Bills got to go through. Uh, Bills got to come through on October 29th. He needs to get the ring rust off, of course. Uh, but we're interested in fighting Gennady Golovkin. Uh, sure you are. Everybody is. I think everybody is officially interested in fighting Triple G, but I don't think anybody's officially interested in signing a contract. <laughs> That's what Triple G put out there. He said, hey, he said, why don't everyone bring their pins instead of their mouths? Yeah, no doubt. Bernie Sanders stated, uh, I always said I needed 18 months for Triple G fight after you, Biggs. It's now time to test myself and see what I'm made of. This is not a fight I've got to take, but it's one I I want to take. Okay, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Bro. Yeah, you're making four million everywhere else, right? I'm ready to fight him whenever, wherever, England, America, on a soccer field, on a boat, on a train, with a goat, in a plane. Yeah, sh- whatever. He will eat the green eggs and ham, Sam I am. The only thing that can get in the way of the stoppage of this fight is the mandatory, not on my behalf. I'm ready to fight him whenever. Oh, so he already, already gave himself an he's out. He's already giving his excuse. Yeah, what the fuck? Way to go, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I didn't even uh, see Warren that. added, we are in dialogues. There will, uh, there's a will on both sides to make the fight happen. I'd prefer it to be in Britain. You should make it in Britain. It would be huge, but it should be in Vegas. I hella want to fight him, but the only thing stopping it. <laughs> uh, you know what? I got to defend my title. Mandatory. 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 Asshole. Uh, yeah, yeah. It keeps going. It's the Triple G week, people. WBA, Gennady Golovkin must fight Jacobs. Here comes your first <laughs> Here comes your first mandatory defense. And this is the only problem with carrying all the belts, yep. right? Yes, sir. You've got to fight everybody they got to tell you to fight. The fight must happen within 120 days. Personally, I think it should just happen every month. He should do a title defense once a month in Vegas and just show him show everybody how great he is and take the mandatory in all What is he? He got six belts. The WBA has ordered Gennady Golovkin, its super world middleweight champion, to face Danny Jacobs. Sorry, Danny. Sorry, but you get paid, Danny. That's a plus. Uh, It's world middleweight uh, titleist in a title shot. The 30-day negotiating period has started, says WBA President Gilberto Mendoza. Guilty! They will have 120 (laughs) days to do the fight. Should negotiations between Team Golovkin and Jacobs collapse, the fight will go to a purse bid. They'll make the fight. It'll be on HBO. It'll probably be at the Forum uh, or at the Garden. That would be my guess. That would be my guess. It's You know, Lee, if your prediction comes true about Canelo taking a lesser opponent, yeah, I would say Jacobs has. Of course has, he is. Of course then, he is. Then Jacobs, I think, does have, even though he's PBC, um, I do think they're ready to make it. Oh, the PBC is chomping at the bit. If they could get all those, t- like, I'm sure. What? I don't know how many titles actually go up in that fight because I don't think Jacobs is ranked in all the different divisions. For my thing, but, this is my thing, Lee. I don't think the PBC wants to protect Jacobs. You know, Jacobs came out last week talking about he's not a ticket seller. He doesn't know why people don't watch him. And that's all true. And that's exactly why I think Al Heyman would sign the fight with Triple G on Jacobs because there's not there's no market to protect. All he needs to do is make a good showing. If he goes yeah, the distance, yeah, you're right. Yep. Goes. And then he would have eight other PBC fights on regular television. You're absolutely the correct. only man to go the distance yeah. with Triple G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could already see the hype behind yeah, it. Yeah, another Gabe Rosado. He had like five losses in a row. No one, the only man to go <laughs> the full distance. Yeah, right. Though he's still saying that. <laughs> I'm the guy who made the distance with the guy. What? Is that a thing? Oh, in boxing, I- it's, it seems like it is now. I mean, in boxing now, you get you get points just because you. I'm you not quit. the man who beat the man. I'm the man who stayed on his feet against the man. Did you did you hear HBO last night when they were talking about how how um Saul Alvarez was beating Smith to a pulp? They should just stop this fight, Lee. Did did any? It was just it was really weird. But yeah, they sounded like total pansies last night on HBO. They, this there's no reason. For him to take this punishment. Punishment? What are you, like, what are you guys talking about, man? Just a new generation. It's a new generation. Max Kellerman, he's from that pussy generation. That's why he hits girls. Hello? Yeah. Right. I'm dead serious. Lee, if you listen to their commentator, they acted like 
Dude, Chocolito Gonzalez last week was bleeding from the nose, the eyes. Both eyes were swollen, and they're talking about how great he is. Last night, they're acting like Lee.